One of the things I've always wanted to try and uh, never quite had the confidence to do is flying a uh, antenna on a kite. Um, you have to be a little bit careful with this. There's a few uh, safety concerns to watch out for. And one of them is uh, the static buildup on the uh, antenna line if you've got a long wire. Uh, there's a couple of other issues as well. So I've, I've always been a bit reluctant, but I've, I think I've done my research and uh, I'm confident I've mitigated all the risks. Now, I've come to the... Uh, highest location in Swindon which should have a nice breeze um, and what I want to do my eventual plan is I want to uh, go to a SOTA summit and uh, I want to uh, fly an NFED halfway for either 40 or maybe 80 meters from a SOTA summit so that's what I'm building up towards but baby steps at the moment I've got the kite now I've got virtually no experience with kites so uh, today is I just want to get the kite up in the air perhaps not necessarily do any radio with it but just get the kite up in the air i want to see uh how stable it is once it gets up in the air how much it moves around what sort of pulling force i'm going to get on the uh line whether i use the uh, uh kite string or the wire i just want to see what sort of load it's going to be under and then we can uh, figure out the um antenna system so i think i've got wire that should be strong enough um but i want to try it with the proper kite string first and uh like I say, just uh, see what sort of loads this thing is going to be under. And uh, if that goes well today, I might put a wire up it and uh, maybe try a bit of a whisper test. But um, like I say, there's a few things that could go wrong here. So I'm just uh, taking it very cautiously, baby steps, one step at a time. So uh, I've got the uh, bike behind me. I'm going to uh, load up all the stuff on the uh, bike and in my rucksack and uh, get up the top of the hill and... Uh, We'll see how blowy it is up there and uh, see what happens once we get the kite up. So here we are at my local high spot. There's a trig point over there. And if I pan round, see it's a lovely view here. And as I keep going round, uh, you see uh, all those buildings over there. And there's a big white building in there as well. That's uh, Swindon Hospital. And uh, obviously in town, the Swindon behind it. And uh, keep panning around lovely view from up here and uh, if I keep going you can see uh, just in the center of the screen there is my bike and uh, if I pan up I don't know if I'll be able to see it on camera yeah there you go there's the uh, kite so got the kite up there and it's uh, flying uh, actually very steady so uh, first impressions looking good Right, here's my setup then. I've just got a dog stake, uh, one of those big long stakes that you screw in the ground for uh, tying your dog up onto. Uh, I've just used one of them as the anchor point, and there's the uh, uh, reel for the string and uh, just belt and braces. I wasn't sure how much tension this was going to be under, how much that kite was going to pull. So uh, I've got quite a nice thick guy rope there, which I've tied onto my bike as well. So uh, the likelihood of the kite pulling that out the ground and taking the bike with it are well i hope fairly uh, remote and uh, i mean it's not mega windy up here but uh, there's enough tension to get the antenna wire up there but i don't think it's enough to it's nowhere near enough to snap the wire so i'm thinking we're uh, in pretty good shape here so i've got my uh, uh icom 703 which is a 10 watt radio in the uh, in my rucksack over there and uh, i've got my uh, tablet computer as well so uh, I might just switch this uh, bit of string out for my antenna wire and uh, launch an antenna up in the air and uh, just see what we get on Whisper and maybe uh, have a go at some FT8, something like that. I put the kite up initially just on the um, manufacturer's supplied string just to see how it flies and it flew really well so, uh, and there wasn't too much tension on the string so I was quite happy it wasn't going to break the antenna wire. So. Uh, I took the kite down, I put the uh, antenna wire on it and then uh, the wind died a thousand deaths and it just wouldn't launch which uh, was annoying. I was on the verge of giving up and then the wind just picked up again so I've uh, got the antenna wire on it and it's actually flying really nicely at the moment so uh, I've got my uh, tablet computer down here, I'm running uh, Whisper at the moment so I've uh, run it on 80 metres, now we're about two o'clock, half two in the afternoon so uh, it's a bit early in the day for 80 metres really. Um, that's more of a sort of evening, nighttime band, but uh, 
got a few stations. Um, I'll, I won't find out the results until I get back home, so I'll, I'll check that when I get home. Uh, currently running 40 meters at the moment, which looks a bit more uh, a bit more promising. There's uh, some Intergy on there. There's um, Holland, a couple of uh, uh, German stations. So fingers crossed, looking really good for 40. So I'm going to give it as long as the kite stays airborne. I'm going to give it about another 10 minutes or so on Whisper, and then. Um, I'll probably switch over to FT8 and give it a go on FT8. So, uh, fingers crossed, this is uh, turning out to be a really successful experiment. Well, I'll just stop for a quick break on my way back down. Um, on this channel, I show you the good, the bad, the ugly. If it goes wrong, I show you. Now, unfortunately, the cameras weren't rolling for this, so uh, I didn't get it on camera, but the, uh, uh, the string that connects the uh, kite to the antenna wire uh, snapped so I've actually lost the kite and it's gone sailing off into the distance uh, I've been chasing it across the countryside on my bike I've lost sight of it I, I can't find it I think I've lost that so uh, giving up and going home now but undeterred we'll uh, I'll probably get another kite and give it another go with a slightly better uh, rigging system next time now I said at the beginning there were a couple of uh, safety concerns with this to uh, think about. And one of them is what happens if your wire breaks. Uh, because what you don't want is for the kite to go sailing off into the distance across the countryside with a very long piece of highly conductive antenna wire dangling underneath it, ready to get caught on uh, overhead pylons. Um, so thankfully I had the foresight to think what would happen if it did break. And uh, I actually rigged it with a weak spot um, at the end of the wire, between the wire and the uh, kite itself. I put a slightly weaker uh, piece of st uh, string in there so that if it was going to fail, that's where it would fail and it wouldn't take the antenna wire with it. Um, and unfortunately, or fortunately, whichever way you look at it, that is the point where it failed. Now, what that shows is... Uh, my weak point that I deliberately rigged into the system works, but it's probably a bit weaker than I wanted it to be. So um, it's all a learning curve. It's a bit of a shame. I can't wait to see the whisper plots when I get home because uh, it was looking quite good on my uh, tablet computer, you know, all the stations I was picking up. So it'd be interesting to see how many actually heard me. So a uh, bit of a shame. It was, it was all going really well up to that point, but uh, like I say, undeterred. Um, I'll look at getting another kite and we'll probably give this another go. Now we've got the initial teething problems out of the way, I think, uh, I think we're ready to uh, take it a step further. Right, several days after um, filming that video and after it all went wrong, um, let's just have a quick look at the uh, whisper plots. Now, I said at the time um, that I didn't think it was working all that well on 80 just because it was well, it was a bit early in the day for 80 but I could only see a couple of stations uh, received on my um, computer screen on my tablet so I didn't think it was working all that well on 80 but if I put you on my screen capture whoa look at this you know now those of you that know Whisper will notice that all these are green um, the green ones indicate stations that have heard my signal. The red ones indicate the stations that I have heard. So other stations have transmitted that I've heard. And you'll notice there's no red dots on here. That is because I messed up, basically. I forgot to uh, connect my tablet computer to the um, internet via my phone. I forgot to tether my tablet to my phone. Uh, so it had no internet connection, which uh, means it didn't actually upload any of my spots um, onto the internet, which is why uh, this whisper plot isn't showing uh, which stations I heard. But all of these stations heard my signal that I put out. This is on 80 metres. Um, so if we go down to 40 metres, again, um, a pretty similar picture. It's covering... Uh, the whole of Europe so it's, this is actually looking like quite a good antenna so um, fingers crossed I'm going to get another kite in and uh, we'll uh, we'll pursue this I want to try it on 20 meters as well see what sort of DX I can get on a long wire vertically so uh, this should be pretty good but uh, 
like I say, just need to uh, need to, need to rethink my uh, attachment point for the uh, wire onto the kite before we do this again. <laughs> 